record-breaking hospitalizations on the Central Coast. All the hospitals in Monterey County came together to share a call for action. We need everyone in Monterey County to take COVID personally, to realize that anyone can get infected and that the risk is real and that it is everyone's personal responsibility to protect themselves and their family. Meanwhile, there are more evacuations for the river and the Carmel fire. Three structures have been destroyed and 311 others are threatened right now. From Highway 68 to South Monterey County, the Monterey County Sheriff's Office is telling people to leave immediately. I can't breathe! I can't breathe! I can't breathe! I can't breathe! I can't breathe. 2020 will always be remembered as the year of COVID-19. The pandemic that blanketed the globe, took millions of lives, and turned the world as we all knew it upside down. COVID-19 dominated everything. Our families, our work, our schools, our gathering places. Our daily lives were transformed. COVID-19 impacted nearly everything at Montage Health, too. From the front doors, to the operating suites, the exam rooms, and office buildings. To get through it, we look to ourselves, and to you, working together as life was going on in its new, strange way. At Montage Health, we were determined to safely navigate the COVID days and to keep our focus squarely on the future, on the after COVID post pandemic future. So this is a story about us, about you. Actually, it's a series of short stories about what we've been up to this past year and where we're going to ensure the health of the community for now and for the future. Never before have I been so grateful to have a longer drive to work than most. Living in Soquel has allowed me this past year to prepare for my day emotionally and let go of the stress at the end of the day as I drive home. For me, being a nurse means being a light in someone's dark place, someone's advocate when they are vulnerable, and providing them with the care that they are unable to provide for themselves. COVID has made me and the amazing team at Garden West really double down on our commitment to providing the best possible patient care, despite our own fears and doubts. And it's not just the nurses and doctors that I work with. There are so many that I am grateful for. Since March of 2020, we have had peaks and valleys in our number of COVID patients, but the increase in infections that occurred after Thanksgiving and Christmas pushed us almost to our breaking point. Okay, I'll be right in. Bedside nurses and CNAs spend hours in bulky, uncomfortable PPE trying to provide care for our COVID patients who are completely isolated from everyone they know. They are critically ill, scared, and often confused. We've had patients as young as 17 and as old as 102. It wasn't until the vaccine became available that people started to feel like maybe we were gonna be okay. Garden West felt blessed to be among the first staff to be offered the vaccine. And the day I got mine is a day I will never forget. 
It felt like I'd been holding my breath for so long and suddenly I was able to breathe again. Hi, I'm Mark Cavallo. I'm an internal medicine physician and the CEO of Montage Medical Group. I moved from Boulder, Colorado to Monterey, California in January of 2020. It was an interesting time for a change of career. When I got here, I also had to manage a new pandemic. This has been a hard year for everyone, I understand. Montage has worked very hard to keep our patients safe while continuing to provide care and meet your needs. About our mission, Montage Medical Group is here to bring primary and specialty care physicians to our community. I know how hard it's been in the past to find a primary care doctor, and we are doing everything we can to attract and retain superior physicians. I'm very grateful to be working and living on the peninsula, and I hope to be here for a very long time, so thank you. Sometimes when different seasons come, you know how to be prepared. With gray days, there's things you can do if you know they're coming either overcast or snowy that make them actually kind of nice. In winter though, sometimes it snows and that gives you like a nice homey feeling. Are there any other gray day feelings? Like boredom? Boredom actually seems like it's kind of the mildest of the hard feelings. It's not like anger or rage or overwhelming stress, but it's not like joy or giddiness or anything like that. It's, it's a little it's teeny, little. tiny bit uncomfortable. Yeah. Well, it depends what you make of it. Like, on one hand, it's if you're bored, it means you have nothing to do, which means you're not stressed. Mm -hmm. Do you guys think that it would be good to have a year that was all sunny days? No. 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 I think that's too much. much. I get bored. They get boring. <laughs> yeah. They get boring. Sometimes when you're feeling sad, you just want to be alone in your room and yeah. feel sad. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with being sad. Yeah. yeah. Do you guys think you have a favorite feeling? It depends on the day. I have like sometimes, a least favorite feeling. Sometimes <laughs> I like that. So. Okay. What is a feeling that is better when you're with other people? Like when you, <laughs> I mean, that's kind of when you have a joke that's really funny, but and you need someone to tell it to. Sometimes it's not even like, having a joke. It's just like you're all just sitting there. You look at each other. You just start laughing. You cannot stop laughing. Yeah. That's the thing. Oh it's also like it's the best when you're like laughing for no reason. You realize that like <laughs> these are like really good people and friends, and you know that they'll support you. It's so much fun talking with children about their lives about school, about their families, holidays, even about the weather. 
every time a child manages an uncomfortable feeling or faces a difficult situation, they're building mental health. It's hard. They need good sleep, exercise, nutrition. They also need to be connected to caring adults. They need adults who can cheerlead or comfort, who can offer perspective or guidance. But they also need adults who know where to turn when they're concerned that a child's distress reflects more than a passing storm. At Ohana, we're building programs that will offer that resource to our community. So parents can turn to us to tell the difference between strong emotions and treatable illnesses. We'll offer high quality treatment, always including the family, not just the child. And we will always be focused on helping young people and families to build mental health. A healthy family makes the good stuff better and the bad stuff bearable. We're excited to be here in this community so that we all can weather the storms that are to come and enjoy the sunny days that also lie ahead. When stuff happens, Mogo Urgent Care is here with everything you need under one roof. Stumble, stagger, walk in, or schedule online. Feel better yet? Mogo provides a very serious and critical resource to our community. Montage Health decided to create Mogo because not everyone has a primary care provider or can get into them in a timely manner. People still nick their fingers, sprain their ankles, get hurt on a trampoline because they were at home quarantining. So we still provided that place for them to come when those injuries and illnesses happened. One of the biggest challenges for 2020 was to make sure the population understood that it is safe to go out and get that care if you need it. We take all precautions, we clean everything. If someone is hurt or sick or ill, it is completely safe for them to come to a clinic and seek care. I feel completely comfortable to bring myself or my son here for the care and know what kind of treatment I would get from this team because they are truly here to serve our community.
Good morning, Julie. How are you doing today? Um, I'm okay, I, I guess. Okay. How are you doing this morning? Tell me what's been going on. Um, I, I, I need to do those breathing exercises first. Yeah, that would be awesome. Go for it. Okay. Oh, okay. Awesome. You did a great job with the breathing exercise. So tell me how you're feeling now. Um, okay. Um, all right. Hey, do, do you like to knit? <laughs> actually, I took up knitting earlier this year. I think I'm actually doing a pretty good job, right? <laughs> <laughs> So he, so here's what happened this morning. You're not gonna believe this. I saw my cell phone, and I just saw that the breast care center had been calling. My husband had been calling, so I had a sense that it was serious. Whenever someone says to you, I'm so sorry, you have breast cancer, it just took my breath away. 33, getting a breast cancer diagnosis. I'm not gonna get to even make 40. You know, I have a son to live for. And the tears, I felt literally like I had been put on my knees. And I feel like that was the shift in my attitude. It didn't have to be a death sentence in whatever time that I had left. I'm not going down without a fight. That next appointment that I had, they walked me through what was going to happen and that we needed to get additional information. I feel like I just had the best angels on earth to care for me. Thank you so much for not just caring for my body, but for caring for my heart as well. That's what really got me through, not just the expert care and the surgery and the therapies, but the way that folks could sit with you and be fully present and to laugh or to handle the tears. That kind of care for my heart, I really think made such a huge difference. You really are my angels on earth. One of the things my breast cancer journey did for me was to just be bold and seize the moment. I feel like a warrior and a thriver, not just someone who survived. I'm gonna be turning 47 in April, and my son's now 16 years old, getting to experience him learning to drive. I mean, he's only a year away from graduating. My husband and I, my childhood sweetheart, we've been through a lot together, 27 years. I've been able to be a leadership coach, not only to the adult superheroes in our community, but a lot of young people who started with me when they were in middle school that have actually graduated all the way through college and now are professionals making a difference in their own way. It's really a blessing to get all these moments that I didn't think I was gonna have. Montage is here for our community, and you are here for us as patients trusting us with your care, as employees, doctors, and volunteers committed to care and caring, as donors making impacts through Montage Health Foundation, now and for the future. Thank you for your support always, and especially in 2020.